How is everyone doing? I'm Nini FC, this is Blue Lines TV, and welcome to the player ratings video. After that disappointing loss to Man City, honestly, this loss is still affecting me. This penalty shootout, like, what's the chances guys like Luis and Jorginho aren't the ones to bury their penalties when they always score them? We're just not getting that type of luck we need right now, but it was a very respectable performance. Players put their heart their effort and their energy in and that's all we can ask for as fans but before i get into the player ratings video today's video is brought to you by the one football app i'm always saying this every single time and i'm gonna keep saying it i use the app every single time it's the most convenient app to use when i was in the stadium every time i wanted match facts for just you know stats in the game when it was happening yesterday i could get them whenever i get lineup news I always wait to get it from the One Football app because I get a ping, I get a notification, and it comes instantly. It's just so convenient to have. If you guys want to help me and help support the channel as well, go to the link in the description below because that's the only way to help me out. Because every time you download the app from the link in the description, it does get tracked by One Football. So if you want to help me out, do that. But anyway, getting straight into things. Now, getting straight into things, starting with Kepper and Goal. Now, the thing I want to say at first is. I'm not going to be taking that incident into account because I want to be objective. I want to just purely base his performance on how he was playing yesterday. I don't want to put that type of politics side into his performance. And I thought that Kepper was very solid, very good actually, in fact. And he really inspired me with a lot of confidence and goal. Number one, aerially, he was so strong winning every ball from crosses and corners. He was in constant communication every time. His distribution was good as well. He played with a lot of heart. He made some very good saves as well. He was very brave on top of that. That incident right at the end where he had to really put his body on the line to make that save, typified his performance. I'm gonna be giving Kepa a player rating of seven out of 10. Moving on to Aspi Laqueta, and Aspi was very solid defensively. And as I keep saying every single time, for Aspi to do what he does best, which is, you know, get tight to his marker, he needs that defensive support around him. And yesterday, because our shape was much more compact and deeper, Aspi was able to do that. And there were times where Raheem Sterling was getting past him. I mean, Raheem Sterling has been that good this season. He's really shown his world-class potential and his ability this season. So I'm not going to use that against Aspie every single time. But I thought that defensively, the guy was solid. He was in constant communication with his team. Of course, he could have been a bit better in the final third. He could have helped out Hudson, Adore and Pedro a bit more if he was a bit more adventurous with his runs. But we can't expect everything from Aspie because he is quite limited in that sense. So I'm going to be scoring Aspie a 6.5 out of 10. Now, moving on to David Luiz. And for me, the guy was a lion playing at the back. I really wish that people kind of appreciate the things that Luis does really well because what he does really well, most players can't do that. I don't think there's any defenders in this league that get anywhere near close to doing what Luis can do on the ball. Yes, defensively people say he's poor, but I'm always making that distinction that it only happens when it comes to his 50-50 tackles. Defensively in regards to his positioning, communication skills, staying at the back. I mean, this guy's positioning is really good. I mean, there's a reason why Conte decided to play him in the middle of a back three, which is the most crucial area for that back three system. And David Luiz was faultless playing in that system. So he's much better than what people give him credit for. I thought yesterday he won every aerial ball. He was a real leader at the back as well. And he was winning most of his 50-50 tackles on top of that. I'm going to be scoring Luiz a 7.5 out of 10. Now moving on to Rudiger and for me, I think that this is one of Rudiger's best games in a Chelsea shirt. The guy was a lion. His determination, that was one thing I can't fault him for. He played for the team especially and I've always had a suspicion that sometimes Rudiger doesn't do the dirty work if he doesn't have to. But I think yesterday, you know, he came back to win every ball he had to. There was that one Michael Norman there was that one noticeable moment in the game where he made like a double foul. He was getting the yellow card on purpose, but he did everything he could do to stop Man City on the counter attack. It worked in the end. And that type of grit and determination really just made his performance even better. I thought he was good. I'm gonna be scoring Rudiger a 7.5 out of 10. Now moving on to Emerson at left back and Emerson really steps up again. Now let's start with a few negatives. Naturally with how City were playing, especially because they kept focusing down the flanks, there were gonna be times where Aspie or Emerson were gonna get beaten just due to the amount of time City just had 
controlling possession down those sides. But even then, he didn't let that affect his performance. He's a guy that keeps growing and growing. And the more game time he gets, the more he's going to show us what he can do. But these past two games from Emerson have been his best two games in the Chelsea shirt going forward. Especially when it came to helping us build up from the back as well. The guy's a footballer. He kept resisting City's press time and time again. He's a very useful outlet out wide on the left that really helps support the attack as well. Makes those runs in behind. His pace is crucial. I think Sarri's finally realised and always had a sneaky suspicion that it would take Sarri a while to finally see the light and start to use Emerson. But it's looking like Emerson's here to stay. I'm going to be scoring Emerson a 7 out of 10. Now moving on to Arvidsson, Jorginho. For me, I thought the guy played a very, very good game. And I think that when it comes to playing in this position, I don't think there's many better than him. I mean, it's ridiculous how press resistant the guy is. How many times is Man City we were playing against? One of the best pressing teams in the world. We were constantly playing through the first phase of press time and time again. And Jorginho was crucial to that because that guy's the glue for the team when it comes to that part of the system. He's incredible. He helps us play out so much. He helps kickstart the attacks. I don't understand why people just don't respect him as a player, but it's a shame his penalty didn't come off. I don't have the same opinion as other people. I think that that's his penalty technique and style. It's come off time and time again. Yeah, there were a few times where Jorginho did lose a 50-50, but he's not going to win every single one. He isn't that type of player. So I don't see why people use that against him so much, in my opinion. But I think in regards to what he brings to the team, he helps the better players play better. He's a tough of player, good players need in a team like this. I'm going to be scoring Jorginho a 7 out of 10. The guy works so hard off the ball and I think that his work rate is something that he never gets credit for. Moving on to N'Golo Kante, Colossus. Simple as that, Colossus. What a world-class player. I mean, ah, oh, the fight. You know, and, uh, I'm hoping now. All the naysayers that think that Sarri doesn't know what he's doing is using him out of position. I hope that the game against City shut them up for once. I'm sick and tired of hearing this stupid debate in regards to Kante and Jorginho. I think that it shouldn't be a discussion point anymore. I think that Kante shows you what he offers to the team. He won every 50-50. He helped lead the press. He helped start attacks. He carried the ball. He helped support the player in the final third as well. He was getting in the box. It was a complete box-to-box all-round performance. I've told you, he's a guy that's going to get better. Since the start of this year, we've seen a better game go out Kante. Incredible. How many times was he stopping counter-attacks as well? Honestly, it's one of the best performances I've seen from Kante. Up there with performances like, you know, the ones against Man City before in Barcelona. The only small thing that really annoyed me was the fact that I feel like Kante should have scored on that counter-attack. I don't see how he missed that. He would have won the game then because we deserved it. So it's a shame. And because of that, I'm going to be scoring N'Golo Kante an 8.5 out of 10. Moving on to Ross Barkley. And one thing I need to say first is that the guy's application when it came to defending off the ball, work rate and desire was on point. So I'll give Barkley credit for that. I think he definitely follows Sarri's tactical instructions perfectly. You know, of course, you know, when we beat Man City earlier beforehand, we used a flat midfield three against them. You know, we had Kante and, you know, the other number eight. You know, man marking uh, Man City's players that play in the half spaces in Silva and De Bruyne. And this is what stopped them playing in the middle and finding any spaces between the lines. And I think Barkley played a crucial point tactically in stopping City in those areas. But, and he's gonna lose marks of this. Whenever it came to our play breaking down the final third, nine times out of 10, it was coming from Ross Barkley either losing the ball, playing the wrong pass. It happens too much. It's a shame, you know, he's, he's an okay player. I'm not saying he's awful, but I don't think he's at the right level for us. Because of that, I'm going to be scoring Barkley a 6 out of 10. Now, moving on to the front three, starting with Eden Hazard up front. And my God, Eden Hazard worked his damn socks off. He really did. He was making runs out wide to stretch a play. He was dropping deep time and time again. He was going in for 50-50s. Another performance where Hazard's work rate has been on point. It's been faultless. He ran so much in that game yesterday. And he kept trying to take the game to City. They were scared of him. There's a reason why Man City respect Eden Hazard. The only criticism I'm going to give him is the fact that he had so many good opportunities he created for himself. I don't understand why he didn't take more shots. Sometimes you just need to force your luck. You need to make that happen. You need to test the keeper, give them something to work for and maybe test their nerves a bit. I think that, you know, occasions where he should be doing that. He's not really doing it. And because of that, I'm going to be scoring Hazard 
an 8 out of 10. Moving on to Willian and Willian was incredible defensively off the ball. He kept dragging back. He was getting tight uh, to his second man he had to mark. He was really helping out Emerson a lot more as well. The only thing again was that, you know, it seems like Willian's struggling to get past his first man at times, which is a bit of a shame, but I thought that he was solid. It's what you needed, you know. If you're not going to have that type of performance to the best of your abilities, at least be defensively sound, help the team in the final third, don't lose support easily, and just work really hard. And that's what Willian did. And I think that's the same thing that Pedro did as well. I'm going to be scoring these guys together. I think that they both had very similar games, and I think that they both worked and help their fullbacks out a lot. I'm gonna be scoring both of them a 6.5 out of 10. Moving on to the subs, and I'm only doing this because we did go into extra time and they did play quite a lot of minutes, starting with Ruben. I need to talk about that first touch from Ruben. I mean, this was world class. There's no debating it. I don't wanna hear anyone doubting that it was. And you have to consider the moment in which he did this. The 92nd minute, he's got a city player coming from behind to win the ball off him. This was audacious. This was spectacular to do that. That piece of skill to beat the press, took the whole midfield out, and then the perfect weight in that pass as well. It's a shame that I was called offside. I don't think it was, but I can't remember from replays, but if I was in the stadium, I didn't think it was one. But this is the final line in football. Imagine if the referee didn't call it offside, Hazard's thrown goal in like the last minute of the game due to world-class play by Ruben. If let's say hypothetically Hazard scores that, we're gonna be talking about Ruben's assist for the next month. But because we didn't win the game, Ruben's piece of play is gonna get lost in time, which is a bit of a shame, but this is what I mean by what the player brings to this team. Please, please, God, give this guy a stronger back. The only annoying thing was that because we were quite defensive in nature, we weren't able to get the ball to Ruben as much, but whenever Ruben was on the ball, he was trying to make something happen. I'm gonna be scoring Ruben a seven out of 10. Moving on to Callum hodgson Adoy, and it was great to see that Sari used him as his first substitute in that game, I think with Callum, he was very, very skillful. A lot of nice first touches. You know, he was causing Zinchenko a few issues, but I thought it was a very entertaining battle between Zinchenko and Callum hudson I think that maybe if he had like an Emerson down the right hand side, he would have freed up more space for Callum hudson to go 1v1. It would have helped him out a lot more. Of course, he wasn't able to get on the ball as much every time because we were quite defensive as we had to be for the system. But I thought that it was a very positive performance. I think that, um. He doesn't look out of depth whatsoever. Honestly, he, he doesn't. He looks like he's been playing with us for years. I think that Sari's finally seen the light, but because hudson Adoy has played better in other games, I'm gonna be scoring him a 6.5 out of 10. And to end on Iguain, the one notable thing he did was that piece of play where he did drop deep to collect the ball and then he was looking for a good passing option and instead he ends up skipping past like two or three Man City players before playing it out wide to hudson Adoy. Good piece of play, but you know, due to the nature of the game, we weren't really able to, you know, find many opportunities for him, which was a bit frustrating in that sense. But, um, you know, it's quite hard to really mark this guy at times because I don't really think he gets a fair opportunity when it comes to even having shots on goal. When I say 6 out of 10, it's just a standard score for me. So that's what I'm going to be giving Higuain. And moving on to Maurizio Sarri. And this was close to being his perfect game. Now, I'm saying close because, again, ideally, Sarri would like to win playing his Sarri ball style of football, but he understood that to have an opportunity to win the trophy against Man City, we're going to have to play this way. So credit for being humble enough to accept that. Credit for setting the team up. I personally feel like Sarri knows how to stop Pep Guardiola. It's the second game now where I just felt this inner confidence that I wasn't worried about Man City. It's a second game now under Sari where he knows how to stop them when it comes to defending off the ball when you've got guys like Kante. You know, Silva, I keep forgetting that this guy was playing against us. It's the, how many times we play in Man City and David Silva's the guy I constantly keep missing and forgetting about every single time, which really sums up just how much we stifle Man City from doing anything in the half space is up between the lines. And you see how they get through teams time and time again. You know, we faced a punishment for this just a few weeks ago when we lost 6 0 to them. That's how good this team are. And to think that we're forcing a Man City team to, you know, spray crosses out wide that are, you know, overhitting their man and going off the pitch and, you know, playing lots of meaningless possession at the back as well. And Pep Guardiola on top of that, scratching his head trying to figure out a way to get past us and try to get the tactical advantage. Sari knew everything he had to do. And this is why his game management was so good because he was so confident in what he had set up for this team. He knew the right times and moments in which he was going to make his substitutions. And it was very close. You know, if you were 
if our luck was there for a few of these opportunities, we would, we would have won the game. I think we deserved to win it in the end. I thought Sari was perfect. I'm going to be giving Sari a 9 out of 10. You guys, these player ratings are just my thoughts and opinions. As I always say, my opinions on giving the ratings are the most important part of the video. Of course, it is subjective in nature in regards to how I score the players. So it's up to you in that sense. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching. There is going to be a five talking points video later out tonight. So stay tuned for that. And there's going to be some live streams tomorrow as well. I'm the NEFC. This is Blue Lions TV. Signing out.